Hi, I'm Nisha Leong, and I'm an ecologist who studies insects in the urban environment. So I started getting um, interested in insects when I was little, and I would see ants crawling on the sidewalk, and um, just being able to see them, I, I thought was really cool. And when I was um, in undergrad, I had the chance to study abroad in Costa Rica, and the insects in the tropics just amazed me and they were I thought they were just the coolest things that I'd ever seen and I mentioned to my professor oh wow I, I wish we had um, as many cool insects and um, big things in California where where I'm from and I was told they are there you just have to look a little harder to find them and sure enough when I came back um, you can find Jerusalem crickets in in your backyard after it rains under rocks and they're like that big already and we have some really big butterflies and some really small stuff too but when you look under a microscope they have just as interesting um, of adaptations as, as the insects do in the tropics. So when I tell people that, that I work on bees um, there are a few things that they always find really surprising. Um, most people think of honeybees when, when I talk about bees and so um, they always assume they come in big colonies but most bees are actually solitary, or at least not eusocial to the point that, um, that honeybees are. And so there's not usually a queen. Um, most bees will, will not sting you. Um, males can't sting you because they don't even have an apparatus to be able to sting you in the first place. People are also surprised how diverse they are. Um, a lot of things that people thought were just flies are, are actually bees. There are around 1,600 species of bees in California. Um, ranging in size from tiny, tiny little species to, to very large carpenter bees and, and bumblebees and sunflower bees. And so I think people are surprised that they come in not just black and yellow, but also bronzy, um, bronzy colors, um, metallic greens, and, and deep black, almost blue colors as well. So I see there as being a lot of um, extra complications that humans um, bring into the landscape. One is the fact that um, the whole area gets drastically transformed. Um, areas that might have had meadows and, and trees now have houses or schools or businesses and we still have remnant patches in, in Oakland um, and we also have some newly created patches such as when you have parks um, and a lot of uh, insects are able to thrive in this environment. They're able to find ways to adapt to it. Um, but then there are also some that might not be able to and might disappear from the environment.